Life is a fragile thing. It changes and adapts so specifically to survive in the environment it's placed in. This ability to adapt is called evolution, and it's the reason that life has endured for the past few billion years. But evolution takes a long time, so when environments change too quickly for the inhabitants to keep up, the result is a drop in population, or at the worst, extinction. And some of these changes can be so big that they affect the entire globe, leading to some of the most catastrophic events in our planet's history. Mass extinctions. Five times during complex life half a billion year reign, the forces of nature have conspired against it, leading to the five mass extinctions. In each of these great dyings, anywhere from 70 to 90% of all life on Earth was completely wiped out forever. They are some of the most significant events in the history of life. And yet, I'm willing to bet that most of you only really know about one, the KT extinction event which wiped out the dinosaurs, which, funnily enough, is the least devastating of all the mass extinctions. Despite the importance of these events, the average person isn't really aware that many of them took place. So I decided to start this five-part video series looking into the five mass extinctions and how they rocked the globe. So, from the chilling tale of the end Ordovician extinction to the asteroid that wiped out the dinosaurs, these are the stories of the Great Dyings. Today we will be looking at the first of these five extinctions, the Ordovician Silurian Mass Extinction Event, otherwise known as the end Ordovician Extinction or the late Ordovician Extinction Event. But before we explore the causes and effects of this chilling tragedy, we must first take a look at the world that it fell upon. The Ordovician period was the second geological period of the Paleozoic era and of the Phanerozoic eon. It lasted from approximately 485 million years ago to 444 million years, and was followed by the Silurian period. At this time during the Earth's history, life on Earth was still mostly confined to the ocean, although we have some evidence that some plants may have begun crawling out of the water by this point. However, these land-invading plants may not have boded well for the stability of the oceans, as we will see soon. A huge array of trilobites and conodonts, a group of eel-like vertebrates characterized by the tooth-like apparatus they use for feeding, made up much of the Ordovician marine life. Other animals such as brachiopods, snails, and clams also roam the seafloor. By the late Ordovician, the first jawless fish began to evolve. Most notably, basal cephalopods continued to adapt and by the middle to late Ordovician would evolve into monsters such as the 9-meter, 30-foot-long apex predator Camerocerus. Like everything else in the world at the time, the continents look alien compared to how they are today. Antarctica, Australia, Africa, South America, and parts of Europe were joined together in the southern hemisphere as the massive supercontinent of Gondwana. Other paleocontinents such as Siberia, Baltica, and Laurentia took up the remaining portion of the southern hemisphere. In between them and Gondwana was a body of water known as the Paleotethys Ocean. Meanwhile, the entire northern hemisphere was taken up by a massive sea known as the Pantelastic Ocean, where most of the marine life lived at the time. The climate was very warm, ranging from between 43 to 49 degrees Celsius, 110 to 120 Fahrenheit, although it would cool drastically towards the end of the period which, as we will see, was one of the biggest causes of the end Ordovician extinction. Due to these higher temperatures, the atmosphere was very moist as well. Life was good and stable for the inhabitants of these early Paleozoic seas. That was until around 445 million years ago, during the Hironadian Age, at the end of the Ordovician. Like many extinction events, we can't exactly pinpoint a single reason for the Ordovician Silurian mass extinction, like the asteroid that killed the non-avian dinosaurs at the end of the Cretaceous. Instead, the extinction seems to have been caused by many uncertain factors that ultimately came together to form this terrible event. The extinction took place over about 1.4 million years during the Hironadian Age of the Ordovician and the Rudian Age of the Silurian, beginning around 445 million years ago and ending a little under 444 million years ago. It likely happened over two major pulses, or intervals. Some scientists suggest the possibility of a more minor phase that took place before the two major pulses, possibly caused by falling carbon dioxide levels resulting from the erosion of silicate rock. This may have triggered a global cooling, which took place before the major glaciations. 
This phase may have affected members of the trilobite, brachiopod, and graptolite families. The first pulse of the extinction was the late Ordovician glaciation of Gondwana. We don't exactly know what caused this, but the theory suggests that an increase in continental weathering could have been responsible. Land invading plants may have also played a role in the cooling by drawing too much carbon dioxide from the air. Regardless of the cause, the Ordovician Earth cooled to a shockingly low negative 8.5 degrees Celsius, 16.7 Fahrenheit, which resulted in the glaciation of the African and South American portions of Gondwana. As if the freezing temperatures were not enough, the expansion of Gondwana ice sheets also resulted in the sea levels falling by 50 to 160 meters, 164 to 525 feet. This, in turn, led to a change in ocean currents as well. The combination of these frigid conditions and the plummeting sea levels led to mass habitat loss for many species. Organisms that thrived on epicontinental seas, bodies of water that lie on continents or over continental shelves, were especially hit hard by the dropping water levels as their habitats became drained. This interval is often referred to as the Late Ordovician Mass Extinction Interval 1, or L-O-M-E-I-1. This Ordovician glaciation lasted for a long time, but despite these harsh conditions, some life would adapt and diversify to form the short-lived Hernadia fauna. Life was just beginning to bounce back once disaster struck again in the form of the second interval. The next pulse or interval of the Ordovician Silurian extinction is known as the Late Ordovician Mass Extinction Interval 2, or LOMEI 2. It took place during the very end of the Hernadian Age of the Ordovician and continued into the Rudanian Age of the Silurian period. Similar to the preceding glaciations, we don't know for certainty what caused it. The warming of the Ordovician climate led to the depletion of the Gondon and continental ice sheets and subsequently a rise in sea level. This return of a warmer climate condition was, for some reason, followed by dire consequences. A sudden expansion in marine anoxia, or depletion of oxygen, and euxenia, raised levels of hydrogen sulfide, struck the already wary earth. These aquatic anoxic conditions spread globally, suffocating many of the few remaining species that survived the LOMEI-1. After a little while, conditions would return to the norm required to sustain life, but not before the global anoxic conditions could take a heavy toll. The Ordovician Silurian mass extinction event ended approximately 443.8 million years ago during the Rudanian Age of the Silurian. Many endemic species, such as brachiopods endemic to Laurentia, were hit exceptionally hard by the extinction. In fact, endemic species made up much of the life lost in this great die-out. Many species of trilobites, bivalves, corals, and brachiopods were either hit hard or completely vanished altogether. Around 60% of all marine genera and 25% of all marine families went extinct. Overall, though, a shockingly high figure of 80% of all marine species were wiped out forever. It may have only been the first, but it was the second most devastating mass extinction in the history of our planet. Despite the major effects of the extinction on marine biodiversity, the ecosystems of the ensuing Silurian period did not really appear to be that much different from the biospheres preceding the extinction. This is likely because most of the species lost during the end Ordovician extinction were endemic, which means they were confined to a certain region. The endemic species which survived, however, take the Laurentia endemic brachiopods mentioned earlier, became more widespread during the Silurian, due to the extinction which forced them to find new habitats. Life would begin to bounce back from this devastation throughout the early Silurian, but it would take several million years to truly recover from this tragedy. So there you have it. That was the chilling tale of the Ordovician Silurian mass extinction event the first but second most deadly extinction to ever rock the globe. I have to say, this was actually an incredibly fun video to make. I love paleontology and being able to share it with others, so I look forward to the second video in this series, which will be covering the late Devonian extinction. But until then, thanks for watching.
please keep in mind that this is an informal source of information. While the sources used are considered reliable, this source should not be used for professional or educational purposes, except if the information presented can be confirmed by other sources or an expert slash educator.